everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Campus Safety Voices podcast. I'm Amy Rock, Senior Editor for Campus Safety Magazine. In today's podcast, we'll focus on upgrading to an electronic access control system. Back before the pandemic at the Campus Safety Conference, I had the chance to speak with Michael Betzler, Police Lieutenant with the Saddleback College Police Department. Betzler presented at the Campus Safety Conference about how Saddleback College employed an electronic access control system on all of its 1500 doors. He later sat down with me to talk more about the project, including who was involved, budget considerations, challenges that were addressed along the way, and how the system was fully integrated into the school's video management system and is also part of the school's comprehensive campus violence and active shooter response program. For my first question, I asked who he recommends be involved in upgrading or implementing an electronic access control system. Here's what he had to say. Well, I think first and foremost, you got to start at the college, school, or the university. And I think you really need to look at whoever's responsible for, uh, whether it's the police department or public safety, I think they need to be involved. And, and when I say that, not that one's more important than the other. Um, next, I would say facilities. Um, this is really a project. It, it's, it's something akin to a construction project, whether it's a retrofit or it's new construction or it's a renovation project. I, I think it has the elements of that, so it requires facilities. And also, I think that it's all very important that you include information technology. And I'd say each one of those representatives needs to be um, at the top of their game. They need to be uh, excellent representatives from their various department, and they need to be able to speak for them. Um, when we talk about access control, I think you also need to consider what the considerations might be for a locksmith, and then um, you really need to include your faculty um, because they're going to be the day-to-day -day users, and if, if they're on your team, you're going to be more successful versus the, having them come in the 11th hour and want to make changes to the thing that makes it works better for them on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think it's important to understand their concerns from the beginning. Uh, I've talked to other people that deal with these projects and um, it, it's easy to get siloed in this thing and think of it, well this is a safety or security issue or this is an IT thing and or this is facilities and um, not get all the players to the table early on and I think it's important that you get everybody at the table listen to everybody's concerns and desires about the project and then you're going to have something that everybody values. We then discussed factors that a campus should consider when choosing an approach to access control, since access control is not a one-size-fits-all technology. Well, I, th I think when you're going to talk about access control, um, if you're going to use it as a safety system, I think you really need to look at what the threat is and what are you preparing for. And I, I, I encourage people to do some research on that and, and consult experts. And it's the beauty of, of a campus safety conference. Uh, uh, it's a great opportunity for experts to get together and talk about the, the real threat that we're trying to address here. Uh, it's more real today than it was two weeks ago, clearly. So I would encourage people to, to um, take a look at that threat first and foremost. And then probably I would say the next consideration would probably be budget. Um, I know for our campus, you know, we're currently looking at a $7 million project, and I know that that's maybe not in the realm of uh, everybody's uh, pocketbook, but uh, I think if you establish that, that framework of, of a workable budget, maybe not exact dollars and cents, but have some idea of, of how far you can go, then really I think that helps lead you to the, the, the next issue, um, which is really your project goals. What do you hope to achieve with this? And I think it's important to understand is you know if you have a limited budget uh, is it more important to do all exterior doors or is it more important to do buildings or areas that you think are most vulnerable and I, I'd say that's up to the individual uh, school college or university. Uh, next I would say you, you want to establish standards what is it you're trying to achieve and, and I think by creating those standards you, you help uh, your construction team or your facilities team and, and your IT team to understand um, you know, what, what is it exactly we have to do? And I know that's, those are some challenges that we encountered on our project at Saddleback College, um, is making sure everybody understood what the standards were. And we had to repeat them over and over again. Uh, and we had very good people on our team, but it's important to, for them to understand uh, what the college or school or university is trying to achieve with this. I would say, you know, once you've established kind of like your budget and your goals and um, your standards, then, then really you're, that, that's going to help establish your scope. 
what are we going to do at this stage of the project? And I know um, from our own experience, we discussed various ways to approach access control. There, there's, there's probably a, a lot of different approaches. I mean, we took the all or nothing approach and we chose all, but like early on we discussed the abilities to, should we only focus on exterior doors right now? Um, should we do exterior doors and include cabling for future um, uh, projects? Do we do uh, only new construction or do we do new construction and renovation projects, scheduled renovation projects that are due to, to touch doors? So I think there's a lot of different approaches and I think that's, that's one way uh, schools, colleges and universities can, can help leverage their dollars by tying uh, access control to other projects uh, that are already scheduled to occur. For Saddleback, the main goal of its new access control system was to address campus violence threats. So I asked Betzler how the system is used as part of its comprehensive campus violence and active shooter program. Here was his response. Quote our facilities director on this, and uh, it's, it's a saying that he came up with early and repeated it throughout the, the course of the project, is he, he says that our system is a safety system, not a security system. And when I say that, I, when we think of access control, particularly traditionally, it was probably more utilized as a security system. And I would say um, where this has helped us to focus on a security system is really it's about protecting people inside the classroom versus stuff inside the classroom. And I, I think that's really helped to direct us. And so I, I credit Jim Rogers with that. Um, and really when I, how we leverage it at our campus is really in, in several different ways, but first and foremost, I would say it's the ability for an individual to lock uh, a, a given door, whether it's a classroom door or lock several doors merely with the push of a button. And uh, in my presentation, I talk about some specific examples, both at Virginia Tech and Parkland, where individuals are credited with saving, you know, uh, over 20 lives each by using their bodies to to, to hold the door closed while a gunman's on the other side shooting, shooting through the door. Um, and I think we can do better than that. And the technology's out there. It's already being employed in, in, in many areas. And I, I even talk about it in my, my presentation that you know every hotel has access control, uh, yet like every school, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, obviously, that's a, that's a bigger decision than I can make. But I would say it, it's certainly something one that in this day and age deserves uh, our attention. Um, I would say that uh, another way that we leverage is our, our ability to lock down uh, entire buildings or the campus uh, remotely from our dispatch area. We have the good fortune of having a police department with a police dispatcher. Anytime we have students on campus, we have a police dispatcher on duty who has ready access to our system who can lock down an e e uh, entire building uh, or the entire campus with the push of a button. And they also have the ability to unlock it. Um, as we know from uh, studying active shooter situations, um, that medical aid portion after the initial shooting part is critical. So I think it's important that we understand the, the full scope of the, the problem uh, associated with a, a campus violence situation or an active shooter and, and how uh, we can leverage access control to address those issues. And I think one of the other things that's important to understand is, you know, in uh, that we have this two-way communication between the lock and our dispatch. So when somebody depresses the emergency lock feature on the back of a button, it sets off an alarm in our dispatch. And so uh, he or she can look at a screen and see exactly where that location is. If we get a single uh, emergency activation, then we send a single officer. But it's a sworn officer report uh, uh, response. I talk about it in my presentation where, you know, active shooter situations that we've had in uh, 2018 in um, educational environments, 75% of those are resolved by law enforcement response. Uh, roughly half of those result in arrest by law enforcement. Uh, another quarter are resolved by uh, intervention by law enforcement. So it's critical that we ha uh, uh, fold in our other responses to uh, active shooter into the uh, overall plan. And, and Access control is only a piece of the plan. It's not the, the entire solution. It's just a piece of it. But additionally, what we've done with our system is if we get three or more activations in a, in a uh, general location, centralized location, then that's a priority response for law enforcement. We send two sworn officers. That's an a immediate response call. And we address it like that. And it also calls for us to lock down the entire building um, and we can do that remotely even before we're able to determine what the nature of the threat is, if there's a threat. 
um, even without disrupting the classroom, we can lock the lock all the classroom doors and exterior doors and prevent a potential threat from penetrating deeper into the building until we can resolve it with sworn law enforcement, armed sworn law enforcement response. I then asked Betzler what recommendations he has for other schools or campuses that are looking to integrate a similar system. This is what he had to say. I'd start with a threat. Um, do, do your research. Take a look at what, what you're trying to address out there. Uh, it may be a little bit different for a K through 12 than, than higher education. And so uh, look at how you would leverage that. I'd say do your research. I know one of the, probably the, some of the best money we spent on our system was the opportunity that we had to send our director of facilities, our director of information technology, our chief of police, uh, myself, and we sent our uh, assistant vice president of instruction to American River College another college that used a similar system to ours that, that employed access control as a safety system and took a look at what they were doing up there. And so we learned from them. And we talk about building a winning team in, I, I, in our presentation, and I think that's critical. And again, I think it starts at um, the school, college, or university. And again, I, I think it, no individual division or department should be responsible for this. It has to be a collaborative team of uh, effort. And then I think that the next part of that is to uh, create or establish uh, a, a, another winning construction team because it, it's a project no matter how you look at it, whether it's new construction or whether you're going to do it as a renovation project or you're going to do a retrofit like we did, it, it's going to involve some construction and you have to have the right people on the team and I, 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 that's critical. One of the things that we do is, is all entities uh, come to every construction meeting and for, for anybody that's been involved in any construction projects and I apologize for kind of maybe getting out in the weeds on the construction side, but I think it's important to understand when we talk about this is uh, we might have 20 people at, at any given um, construction meeting, two representatives from IT, two from the police department, one from facilities, and then uh, representatives from all the involved parties. Um, and, and we're collaborative, we speak openly there, everybody uh, is comfortable with one another, and we've all bought into the the objectives and the goals of the construction project. So what that gives us is the ability to address problems as they arise and, and deal with them effectively as a team, no finger pointing, and uh, we we're able to resolve uh, issues with the system and, and uh, the project as we go along in, in minutes instead of hours or days. Literally, solutions are, are based in minutes. And last but not least, um, our whoever the owner representative is for the project, and I, I, I can't emphasize this enough, whoever's gonna represent the, the school, the college or university, they have to be knowledgeable about what they're uh, undertaking. Uh, if they're not already knowledgeable, they can get that knowledge, but they, they need to do some research ahead of time and, and make themselves smart. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a director of facilities, Jim Rogers, he's a former Marine Corps Colonel, um, and he, he's a true leader and he leads that team. He understands the, um, the requirements of the project and uh, he really drives the project. And I, I have to give a, um, credit to, to him uh, being our owner representative. Um, I, I don't know that there's, there's a better one out there. He's, he's amazing. As with any project this large, missteps can be made. So I asked Betzler to touch on some mistakes that were made along the way that he'd like other campuses that may be undertaking a similar project to learn from. We, we've done a lot of things right. D done a lot of things right, and uh, I, I think there's certainly things we could have done better. I think one of the one of the things that we probably underestimated was the amount of work that would be required on the college. Uh, uh, and I'd say this is true for anybody who's going to do access control, uh, whether it's a K through 12 or higher education, is uh, it puts a lot of demands on uh, the infrastructure and the personnel that you currently have. Um, this is an IT project. Uh, or it's an IT heavy project. Uh, my partner in the presentations, Robert Ford, uh, has been critical in making this thing work for us. Um, but you know he has other duties too, as do I. Uh, yet the, a lot of times the bulk of the responsibility for access control falls upon us for the, from the college perspective, as it does our director of facilities, Jim Rogers. And I, I know this is a uh, this is an important project, um, but we. We probably underestimated the the uh, impact that it would have to our existing personnel, and and just so we're upfront about it, I mean, we're basically going campus wide with over a thousand doors for hardwired access control. We haven't added any additional personnel 
uh, to the campus, uh, either in IT facilities or the police department to deal with some of the challenges that, that we're presented with. So uh, I'd say we could have probably done that one a little bit better. And finally, I asked Betzler what he feels Saddleback College excelled in during the system's implementation. Here's what he said in closing. I'm going to go back into review mode here, but, uh, you know, like, um, I, I can't emphasize the research part uh, enough. I, I'd say, you know, it's funny, we work in an educational environment, um, and, and sometimes we, you know, research is going on all around us, but that when we take on a project like this, we'll we'll learn a little bit and then we'll just try and move forward. And I'd say the more you learn about this going into it, the, the better. I think uh, we learned from the, our first two buildings to go online and, uh, and we did a good job, but it was new construction and new construction is relatively straightforward. But once we started down the road of renovation, uh, we took a little bit of a step back and we probably met for um, a solid six months ahead of time with uh, 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 some of our consultants, um, some people that have worked on the project before and internally and worked on some of the, the issues that we could potentially uh, foresee. And I'll tell you, some of those meetings that we had, and this is without swinging hammers and taking apart doors and hooking up doors, but we resolved a lot of the problems that we would encounter later on down the road in those meetings in an air conditioned room without the pressure of dollars, you know, people standing around the job and not being able to get things done. And so I think that's made us efficient. But we talk about this concept of a progressive design build and I, I um, we have some amazing partners on the construction side that help me to understand this, but it, it's, um, it, it's really uh, an approach to this project that's allowed us to take a project that originally was budgeted for $10 million and bring it down to uh, in the $7 million range by um, looking for opportunities to, to shave off uh, a door here and there that doesn't necessarily need electronic access control. Uh, like we certainly don't need to put a, a $3,000 lock on a storage closet that, that holds $500 worth of uh, office supplies. Uh, so we've taken those things away, but yet we've tried to stay within the, the standards that we developed from the beginning, which is if it's got people on the other side, then we want to protect them with electronic access control. We did not want to issue any more hard keys. We wanted to stay out of that business, um, and, and we stuck to our standards, and I think that that was, that was critical in helping us move forward. I, again, uh, Jim Rogers calling it a safety system and beating us over the head with that thing. And I, he's, if, if he ever sees this thing, he'll, he'll probably laugh. But um, when people called it a security system in a meeting, he corrected them right then and there and, was, and said, don't think of it that way. And, and it, what's amazing is that the people that, that are part of that, those meetings today, um, if they could all sit here right now around this room, and, and tell you they believe in that now and, and they've bought into that concept. And I'm talking about um, uh, Department of State uh, architects and construction managers, uh, amazing people, our, our project supervisor, you know, uh, our IT folks, our uh, consultants who sit around the table, our hardware, software, they've all bought into the concept that um, they understand that they're doing something important and that this has the potential to, to save lives down the road. We, we hope it never has to be used in that fashion, but in this day and age, I don't, I don't know that we can, we can play the odds and gamble with the lives of our, our staff and students that way. So I, I'd say, um, you know, lastly, um, and, and I kind of touched on a little bit of it, it's, it's those teams, you know, like uh, our our facilities director, he likes to say, you won't see daylight between our director of IT, our chief of police, and, and him as our director of facilities. And what he means by that is we speak with one voice. We've already worked out our, our differences, and now we've agreed upon on a path for this project, and we speak as one voice. And same with our construction team. Um, we've put together an amazing construction team, and with his leadership, his strong leadership and communication, uh, we have buy-in now from all of them, and they understand the direction we're going. And I, I, I come from a tactical background, and, and uh, sometimes we use military adages and whatnot, but it's, it's the commander's intent. What does the college really want us to do? 
And I think once everybody understands that, we've made that clear and we will accept nothing less than that. Um, I think now everybody that's associated with the project now is, is moving in that direction. And quite frankly, I think they're, they're, they're proud of what they're doing. And I, I think they, they see the potential for this thing to work. And hopefully Saddleback Never College you know, experiences a test of that system.